Welcome to this video where I'm going to be talking about my coding stack in 2026. Obviously it's 2025, but it's better to put a 2026 in the title now because it's basically 2026. Now the first thing I want to mention is I use Claude Code more than anything. Claude Code is my go-to AI. However, as of about four days ago, I use Sonic 4.5 instead of Opus 4.5. The reason for that is Opus, if you don't know, and if you can't tell, it's been nerfed 100%, all right? I still do use Opus for some things. I'm just waiting for the usage to go down a bit. Less and less people will start using it once they realize it's been nerfed, and then they can turn whatever it is they keep turning back on very, very shortly. So this is kind of my go-to stack. Now, I do use another AI coder, which people may or may not be surprised to hear. I use Codex with GPT, uh, what is it, 5.1 Codex Max or whatever it's called. I can't remember the exact name of the model. I think this is right, but I'm not 100% sure. This is my second go-to. If Claude is giving me has, uh, SAS or hassle, one of the first things I do is I power up GPT 5.1 Codex Max inside Visual Studio Code. So I use Claude code inside the CLI, and then for some reason I've just found that the Visual Studio Code version of Codex works better than the CLI. You guys might agree, disagree, this is all my opinion. This is just the stack that I personally use. Now, just before we continue the video, guys, most of this is already available inside my school community. I make pretty frequent posts on um, what my current best stack is. So you can see here, this is basically my best stack. And also inside Core AI Coding Concepts, I have this entire thing written down in a step-by-step -step process on how to build a production level app from scratch. So if you do want a little bit more help and if you just want kind of a more up-to-date thing, check out the school community. It'll be in the description or in the pinned comments. Now, do I use any other AI coders? Not as of today, okay? You might be asking, why don't you use Gemini? Gemini is just being overused. It's, it's really slow. I have Gemini Ultra and I'm still having huge, huge, huge problems getting anything to work, okay? So I generally do steer clear of Gemini. I haven't found it to be good personally. That is my opinion. You may have a different opinion. If you have a different opinion, that's totally fine. I just don't really like Gemini. What do I use aside from this? I use Convex as my back end i'm going to put back end in uh, speech marks because I, I don't think it's actually technically classed as a back end but basically if you don't know convex.dev is um a really interesting way oh, okay it's a back end okay interesting it, it's like a hosted back end plus da uh, database in the same section now one of the coolest things about convex is it basically the way it works is you have your static Next.js website, and then let's say you have a button here for sign in. When the user presses the sign in button, this goes to Convex's server where you have your backend running, and basically it kind of yeah connects to Convex, right? Now, the really cool thing about this is, first of all, it's very easy to have dev and prod split, right? This is a pretty traditional problem that devs have. And then the other really, really cool thing is if you want to push code to Convex's backend, you do not have to push to GitHub and you don't have to sit and wait for your entire project to rebuild, which can take anywhere between eight to 15 minutes sometimes, right? So the dev in the backend is much more efficient because all you have to do is change some code and then push the code to Convex's backend. And that can take, you know, less than one minute to actually do. So for me personally, I'm loving Convex right now. Some people left some negative comments about Convex recently. I don't really, they said that it has problems. I'm sure it does have problems. Every kind of thing has problems, right? I'm just finding Convex to be the one with the least amount of problems and the most amount of positives so far. So for front end, I'm using Next.js, um, which is just a static Next.js build, right? I'm learning more and more about these things. I actually understand what that means now. Um, so the, the website itself, like the marketing website, the easiest way to show you guys this is just to go to harbourseo.ai. If you don't know, Harbour is something that I launched about a year and a half ago. I had huge problems with it. I had an, we, we hired an entire dev team, 
product manager. It was built by other people and it just never really got the love and attention that it deserved. So as of today, this is my in my hands again. This is a Next.js website, right? This is all Next.js. But when I press one of these buttons, right? So if I go here and do, I don't have any tokens on this account. But if I press this button here, which I can't because I don't have any tokens, but it would basically talk to my convex backend automatically, right? But if I sign out, and then let's just go to, for example, slash features. This is Next.js, and each of these is just a static Next.js website, which is a really, really nice build, guys, I have to say. I absolutely love it. Now, what else do I use in terms of stack? So I use Clerk for auth. I use Convex, again, for database, right? If you don't know, the other really cool thing about Convex is you know, one of the traditional problems with working on databases, there's two places that you have to change the database, right? You have to change it in the code. So you have to make your code match your database, right? Um, but the other thing that you have to do, well, yeah, there's, there's two places. So you make changes to the code and then you make changes to the database, right? Now, obviously there are different ways to do this. This is quite a newbie way to do it, in my opinion. Um, you can use ORM, right? Uh, which is kind of what I do with Grove. But basically with Convex, it's slowing down because apparently this is a full um, thing. Can I just start again? No. Um, yeah, the way Convex works is you change the code, right? And then that automatically acts as an ORM and it changes the database as well, right? So that's another really, really nice feature of Convex, which I'm absolutely loving at the moment. It's also supposedly supposed to be more secure as well, which is huge because obviously I'm an AI code. I have no experience in dev whatsoever. I have no idea how to make something safe and secure. So basically having Next.js and Convex is a really, really good way to have things secure. Now for email, I use Resend. I love Resend, guys. You should definitely check out Resend if you haven't. For hosting right now, I use DigitalOcean uh, just because that's what I've basically gotten used to using now. And then, of course, everyone's favorite, payments. I use Stripe. I've heard of Paddle, haven't used it, but yeah, this is basically what I would call my full stack, um, and I don't have any problems with this. Now, the really cool thing about a lot of these things is it's very easy to split between production and development. The way it works, if you don't know, is you have two convex environments, right? So if I just log in here, let me just show you what I mean. And they sit on top of each other, which again is another massive change between, you know, something like Superbase and convex, right? So look, I have development cloud and I have production cloud. All you do is you change the environment variables inside dev, right? So this, this points to a specific clerk domain. And if I go to prod, you'll see that the environment variables are different, right? Huge. This makes my life so much easier because then I have localhost 3000, right? It's not on right now to code with. And then I have the actual live website sitting on DigitalOcean, which is where the prod environment is. I'm telling you guys, if you don't really fully understand all this stuff, definitely look into what I have written down here and what I've shown you in this video. I only use these two AI coders, and this is my entire full stack um, development AI dev, like stack, whatever the hell it's called. And it's working really, really well. Okay. I can make changes now so much more easily. I'm actually considering spending the next week, I might stream this, I'm not sure, moving SEO Grove, which if you don't know, I have another SaaS called SEO Grove, which is right now on. Um, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and a Python backend. I'm considering moving this entire system over to the system that I've shown you in this video as well, just because in my opinion, it's just a much, much better system. I'll leave the video there, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you're watching all the way to the end of the video, you're an absolute legend, and I'll see you very, very soon with some more content. Peace out.